This is a weird market. It's like the tale of two markets, like a have and have not type market. Well, we'll get to that in a couple seconds. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We'll also do an interest rate update and some analysis in that regards. And hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I am here to help. By the way, I know I've always had a face for radio, but got into some poison ivy this weekend and must have touched my face. It's been a fun couple of days, hence the marks and why I am going for a little bit more of a grisly look and having not shaved. So I apologize. But back to real estate. So the have and have not real estate market that I was talking about, I had two buyers this weekend that presented offers to sellers that were 10% below asking price and nearly 8% below asking price. Then one of my sellers ended up accepting an offer for nearly 8% above the asking price, while another one of my buyers got a house going 17% percent above the asking price. Some buyers are out there looking for the deals of the century because they have been consumed by a real estate's going to drop like hot pancakes narrative, while the other segment recognizes that pricing is a matter of, well, supply and demand in a marketplace. I'm finding that which side you're on ultimately depends on what you're hoping and praying for. There is so much conflicting data out there that it's easy for both camps to build a hill, stand on that hill, and be prepared to die on that hill. After the weekly data, I'm going to talk about a personal example as to why I think it's a good time to buy. So hang around. But first, let's jump into the single family data market stat. We currently have 4,300 houses on the market. It's another inventory high for 2023, but we actually fell behind the pace of new listings last year. We now have 6.9% more homes on the market than compared to just 28 days ago. If, if, if history is an indicator, then we should see inventory continue to build until around the end of October. And at that point, we should start seeing inventory levels pull back a bit. It's time to see if, well, history is going to be that indicator. The inventory gap grew a little bit this week. We are now back above that 1,000 unit barrier. We now have 1,033 more houses on the market than compared to the same time last year. The inventory gap also increased when compared to the previous low point in 2021. We currently have 675 fewer houses on the market than in 2021. We had 973 newly listed single family homes this week. That was a pretty good showing for new listings. However, it was still 16.6% .6 fewer new listings than compared to the same time last year when 1,166 houses came on the market. The four week rolling average is 900 units. And I expect this rolling average to be lower for the next couple of weeks as we go over the dog days of summer data. Now, we knew the data was going to show a big jump in under agreements this week. And the data, well, it did not disappoint. We had 941 homes go under agreement, which was 16.2% less than the same week last year when 1,123 houses went pending. The four week rolling average is 829 units, just like the rolling average for new listings. I expect that for the next couple of weeks, our under agreements will exceed the rolling average as the summer slowdown months continue to be an anchor to our data points. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were off by 16.6%, while under agreements were off by 16.2%. I'd say that we had some relative balance this week in the sense that it is similar market conditions, but we're just doing, well, 16% less business across the board. There were 671 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $732,000 and a median sales price of $605,000 and months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market that we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market, but the closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market that it is. Now this week, months of inventory actually inched up to 1.39 months. This is compared to last week's 1.38 months. It's still a great market for a seller provided your house is priced right. Real quick, here's my shameless plug. If you're thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now onto the condo market. We have 2,436 condos on the market as of Monday. It's another record inventory week for 2023. And if you're a buyer, it's okay to smile and show a little joy with this inventory built. We've seen condo inventory build up 11.7% in just the last 28 days. And just like last week, we had an inventory high for 2023. But the difference between this year and last year for the amount of condos on the market actually got bigger. We now have an inventory difference of 315 units, which is up from last week's 275 unit difference. And the inventory gap hit a low point on the week of August 28th at a 208 unit difference. There are 527 condos that came on the market with a four week rolling average of 400 condos. 
We listed 14% fewer condos last week than we did the same week in 2022 when 613 condos came on the market. And if you were looking for a surprise in the data, then it's here in the under agreements for condos. There were 422 condos that went under agreement this week. Now the four week rolling average is 323 units. So we were well above that average, but here's where the surprise is. This week last year, there were 421 condos that went under agreement. This means that pending activity was up by one unit or 0.2% more homes sold this week than this week last year. So 14% fewer listings were compared to this week last year while selling one more condo. I was a little surprised to see the inventory gap actually grow this week when I figured out that the amount of condos that went under agreement actually surpassed last year. There were 300 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $656,000 and a median sales price of $512,500. Now, months of inventory, it increased to 1.84 months from last week's 1.75 months. Any chance that you could do me a huge favor? It just makes a huge difference. You hit that like button. It just really helps with that YouTube algorithm. And well, subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So please subscribe. Time to talk about interest rates. According to Mortgage News Daily, interest rates are down slightly. Point. 0.02% for the week. So for all intents and purposes, mortgage rates, well, they were flat this week. But I'm thinking that could just be the calm before the storm because the big news of the week is the Fed rate hike decision. The big money, it's betting that there won't be any rate hikes. And at this point, does it really matter what they do? I know that's a stupid statement, but they have mismanaged this entire situation and are one of the reasons why we are here. First reason is that we decided to print $10 trillion during COVID and now continue to print another $2 trillion a year as we run the deficits. Where the Fed has the blame is due to their inaction to not increase rates for too long. They just kept saying it was transitory, which it was pretty obvious that it was not. The Fed didn't clamp down fast enough and allowed inflation to get out of control. And a quick side point, I know Americans, they don't really care too much about the massive budget deficit that our government runs, but they should. It's the reason why everything costs more and why it's getting harder and harder to make ends meet each month. And we could go a lot deeper and talk about the risk of the dollar no longer becoming a reserve currency for the world and what that would mean in our way of life, but well, I just don't want to bore you. So we're going to continue to see inflation and rate hikes as long as the federal government is printing trillions of dollars each year. Increasing rates while the government is still spending like a drug seller is like, well, spitting in a rainstorm. But back to this week's data point and off my tangent, maybe they raise this time around or maybe they won't, but they will need to continue to raise rates at some point because real inflation is a lot higher than the 3.7% number that they try to pass off to us as. Inflation, it's coming back and it's going to come back with a vengeance. Been to a gas pump recently? Again, go look at history and what happened in the 70s. So what's my personal example of why I think now is a great time to buy? It starts with, as you very well know, that I believe inflation is going to come back hard. So what is one of the best ways to hedge against inflation? It's to buy real estate. And for a couple reasons. The first reason is that you leverage real estate. So let's say you buy a $600,000 house and put 20% down. That means that you are using $120,000 of today's money, but the value of that money is going to decrease. And again, in my opinion, it's going to decrease a lot. When the value of the dollar decreases, then the price of goods, services, and assets, well, they increase. So in that case, you're spending 20% of today's dollar to have an additional 80% value hedge on price inflation. And by the way, those numbers only get better if you're putting 10% down or even 3.5% down. And then there's my personal favorite inflation hedge that revolves around the mortgage payment. Here is where I will use myself as an example. I bought my house back in 2015. Since that time, the value of the dollar has inflated by 30%. But my cost basis is in 2015 dollars. My $3,500 mortgage that was locked in back in 2015 is now the equivalent of $4,533 in spending power. So while my income inflates due to the decrease in the dollar, my expenses, well, they're locked in. In a weird and crazy sense, people that are locked into their mortgage actually benefit from inflation. I know all that was a little confusing, but just know that buying a house offers you and your family stability and locking in your expenses at today's costs while offering you a hedge on future inflation. And that is why it's a great time to buy. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Then whether you are looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you. 
just talking about your real estate goals, wondering how much your home is worth, go to chtvalue.com. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, then we can actually help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information. Then I'm going to reach out to you. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video. So, well, I'm going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.